right, welcome back to Geeks Are Sexy. I'm Jason LaDuke. We've brought our entire panel back today to talk about balancing long-term versus short-term thinking. Really what I want to get at is this is the idea of balancing your strategic thinking with your daily tactics, but that wasn't a good keyword when I plugged it into Google to use to promote this video later on. So today we're talking about balancing long-term versus short-term thinking. And because I didn't do my short-term thinking, I do need to mention our sponsor, 5AM Global, one more time. They can handle all your social media needs, not just posting stuff for you, creating posts, creating content. They're going to really help you figure out what are the right platforms to be on. In my business, being on LinkedIn is great for me. Love doing stuff on Facebook, but it doesn't generate me a lot of business, so I focus mainly my efforts on LinkedIn. I'm sure you all have the same things that you do for your business. So, welcome back everybody, Ari, Lee, Jess. We all know we need to have a strategy in a business or a nonprofit. We also have to be able to focus on the details of the day-to-day -day and be able to shift and pivot and take care of things we do. Jess, how do you balance between those ideas and how do you, how do you shift gears between thinking strategically, thinking short-term, and, and how to take action? Right, so I'm a big, big list person. I have okay. like a million lists and I write everything down. And then for me, it's really about like, fig like prioritizing what really needs to get done mm -hmm. like today, this week, this month. Mm -hmm by the end of the year and then just kind of prioritizing things based off of that. Okay. That's kind of really how I, that's how I do it. Okay. That was, that was what we looked, you know, when we were looking at a radar screen in the Air Force, it was always the, the, what's the, what's the, what's the thing that's closest in and moving fastest at me, right? Yep. So, so you kind of sort things by distance and the speed they're coming at you, right? Yep. Ari, yeah. is that how you do things or? Yeah. Um, I mean, you always want to have a, a plan and then you also want to know what, kind of what time it is also in the year to, mm -hmm. you know, unroll those plans as well. Cause you know, a lot of people are busy during the summertime. So, uh, you want to, you know, unveil things mostly in the fall and the springtime as well. So yeah. I always keep that in mind as yeah, well. I imagine people are on vacation and taking care of the kids. <laughs> yeah. And I imagine in your business, because just because it's all finance based is you're yes. really focused on the ends of quarters when taxes yes. are due, that kind of thing. Yeah. End of the month, so. quarterly taxes are huge. And then after yeah. taxes are huge as well, because people yeah. know exactly who, who's good and who's been bad with them. <laughs> just like Santa Claus, right? Yep. So. <laughs> just like Santa. So. Lee, how about you? How do you how do you balance this idea of I've got to think about the long term, I've got to think strategically and about how to make moves that are gonna make us grow and meet our mission in the in the broad term, but I've also got to get things done today. Well, I think that when you have a business, you start with a vision, right? You have your vision, you set your goals, and but you also have to be flexible as a business owner and my position as VP of marketing, I it's you cannot be that rigid that you can't make changes because growing a business is all about making adjustments and mm -hmm. and being flexible. Yeah, you got to go where the market takes you, right? If you, you may have a great product, but if it's not if it's not positioned the way the market's interested in it, or it doesn't do exact just doesn't do what the market needs it to do, you got to make some changes. That's right. So, are you? What are the most important things you consider on the long-term side in your long-term planning for your career um, or for helping out with your, you know, the business you work for? Yeah, so long-term plans, we always discuss those with our clients, especially, mm -hmm. um, you know, those newer businesses because they come into the business with a lot of ideas and they want to execute everything out, but we mm -hmm. kind of, you know, pull them back and say, okay, let's do a little by little because you also don't want to run out of money. That's a big thing. Um, so... Long-term plans, I think that um, we definitely want to know exactly where they're going. And then personally, I mean, I just like Jess, I like to write everything down and what I'm wanting to achieve. And then also how you're going to achieve them. And, um, and then those go into even little smaller lists themselves yeah. on how to achieve those goals. Um, okay. And just getting through those checklists, basically. Yeah, strategy and, to task, right? Yeah. Right. So. Same question, Jess. What do you What are you thinking about in the long term? What are the big What are the most important things you consider as you develop a long term strategy for Original Cocktail Club? So for us, obviously, like we want as many members as possible. You mm -hmm. know, we have a number of members that we want to achieve by the end of the year. It's a little different for us since we're a startup. We don't really we're trying new things every day, right? Mm -hmm. So we're kind of just sticking everything against the wall and then mm -hmm. seeing what sticks. So. Or throwing everything against one single six. So I mean, you know, if we see that events are working really well for us, then we're going to try and scale those. So it's not really like a cookie cutter type thing. We're just trying a bunch of stuff, and whatever seems to be working, then we're going to keep scaling yeah, like, on those things. Like, like setting up a booth outside the aviator right. game, right? That's right. Somebody yep. had that great idea. Somebody I, did. I don't, I don't know who it was. 
<laughs> Lee, what are the big things you're considering at Rethink Worldwide? What are the what are the big factors you put into into setting up your strategy? Again, you know, we have a vision and we set our goal. And right now, our biggest uh, key initiative is to bring awareness to the city of Las Vegas. Um, I do believe that we're a little bit behind. You know, California has already. Um, ended their single-use plastic when it comes to straws. New York has done the same, and even the UK. And But we haven't done that here um, in Vegas. Mm -hmm. So right now, as a new um, nonprofit organization, we want to make sure that we get the message across, that people are educated, mm -hmm. and that we learn um, and, and teach everyone to stop using single-use plastic. Because as you can see from um, our conversation earlier, it ends up you know, in the ocean and it, mm -hmm. and it hurts us, you know, as far as our health is concerned. So it's all about educating everyone. Um, but again, um, our biggest initiative, uh, the second biggest initiative is to, to do Rethink um, Earth Week in 2020. Okay. So that's going to be a big deal for us. And as we go through 2019, we are building up to that. That's great, and I think yeah. uh, it, sound, it sounds like a big piece of this is not just getting the word out, but getting the word out to the right audiences as well. Correct. So not just uh, not just splashing Facebook ads all over the place, but really having meaningful conversations with decision makers. It is. I mean, we, we're actually targeting a lot of the local business owners because mm -hmm. it starts with them, right? A lot of a lot of businesses are really um, they're. they're they're wasteful, mm -hmm. <laughs> and so we have to start with them. Yeah. So strategic thinking. I learned this when I was an instructor in the Air Force, teaching a strategy class to lieutenant colonels and colonels in the Air Force. Strategic thinking doesn't really come naturally to people. It's really a learned skill. So Lee, how have you either uh, you know developed that skill on your own, or how do you try to develop that on your team? How do you help your team start to take those steps to think big picture as opposed to just focusing on today? You have to know um, your goal. You know, you have to set a goal and you have to work every week, every month, every quarter towards mm -hmm. that goal. And to me, you know, when it comes to, to growing a business, you have to write it on the wall. People have to see it and you have to be reminded of it every day. If you don't look at that goal, you're going to forget, you're going to get sidetracked mm -hmm. um, and you're not going to hit that goal. So we look at, um, on a monthly basis, where we are as a company, um, dollar-wise, um, mm -hmm. where we will be in a quarter. We look at all the prospects that we're talking to. Um, we look at you know um, where we need to be um, in mm -hmm. second quarter, third quarter. And if you're not where you need to be halfway through the year, then you got a lot of catching up to do mm -hmm. in the third quarter. Right, you don't want to give so, up on the goal. Right. Right. You don't. You don't just say, "Well, we didn't have a great second quarter. Right. Let's just dial it back for the year." Right. Sure. And and I have to add to as as a business owner, you know, you do have a strategy, but um, you can't be too rigid. Like I said, to mm -hmm. to where you can't change plans halfway. Right. But you have to know that early enough because if you wait to the fourth quarter, it's too late. Okay. Right? So you have to be able to be flexible. Okay. Same thing, Ari. How do you foster that on your team? That idea of thinking big picture, thinking, looking out for the best interest of the company and the goals, as opposed to looking out for yourself or what's important today. Yeah, and she made a, she hit on some really good points about keeping your vision of your company right there in front of mm -hmm. you and going back to that and keep going back to that when you are looking at those long-term goals. Um, a lot of people start a company and then they kind of get sidetracked, I feel like. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'm like, well, it's is that really, really in the... Yeah, it's really easy. And it's like, and you have to ask them, is that really forming towards your vision? Is that mm -hmm. going towards your vision, really? Um, so with those long-term goals, again, writing them down, um, making sure that, again, it goes back to your vision and knowing exactly when to execute them. Do you have your long-term goals written down on a list? Since I you're the sure list do. Person, I bet I'm you the do. list queen. <laughs> so, so, and you've got a you've got a small team that you're working with. Yeah. How are you getting your team to think big picture and, and not just on the things that they're good at or the things that they want to do? You know, I think we and Ari both kind of like nailed it on the head. I mean, it's really all about like what are you trying to achieve, mm -hmm. making that really clear, and then constantly evaluating like where am I spending my money? What's working? What's mm -hmm. not working? Where do I need to cut things out? Mm -hmm. Where do I need to expand more on? And then and, you know, just really focusing on the stuff that's working and scale, mm -hmm. trying to scale that as much as possible. Yeah, so I, th I think the three themes I heard was know where you're headed. <laughs> Is what you're doing today helping you where you're headed? And if it's not, cutting it out. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's that's kind of what I heard. So, yeah. so there's your advice on uh, helping yourself and helping your team think uh, think a little more strategically. I mean, that's the kind of advice we want to give here. Is how do you get your team looking out for the best interest of your company? It's great. It's great that you're able to employ people. It's great that they're working for you. But to really have a great team, you want everybody thinking about the best interest of the company or the nonprofit. So, so we're at the end of our time. Thank you to our sponsor, Five AM Global. Ladies, please one more time tell our viewers how they can reach you. And if you have an event or something you want them to show up to. Awesome. Well, um, you can reach us at originalcocktailclub.com. Check us out. We'd love for you to sign up and try us out. Okay. And you can reach us at rethinkworldwide.org. We're also on Instagram and Facebook at Rethink Worldwide. And for all you ladies, on June 7th, we're actually having a fundraiser at... Uh, a jazz nail salon in uh, in Henderson. So 40% is going to go towards the uh, the charity. Well, there you go. I don't get my nails done, but I will certainly <laughs> pass that on. Some guys do. I don't, but I will pass. I'll, I'll pass it on. Okay. And you can reach us at nowcfo.com. All right. Well, again, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for hearing about your companies today. And thank you for all this insight on helping people think strategically because I found it is really one of the hardest things to do. It's a lot of business owners are really good at the thing they do, but it's hard to think big picture when you have stuff coming at you every day. So thank you for being here. Thank you for being here and watching us. I see my good friend Steve Wood has tuned in at some point. I hope he's still here watching. Steve, I'm sorry I didn't get a chance to to mention you before, but thank you for watching. We'll be back next month on the fourth Thursday of the month. You guys know I never look at my calendar before a week out, so I don't know what day it is to tell you, but come back in a month. We'll see you here. This has been Geeks Are Sexy. I'm Jason LaDuke. We'll see you next month.